Hello again. In the last few days, we have been discussing linear response theory. Uh, we have been uh, we started with a video on the interaction picture. Interaction picture. Then we went and discussed the scattering matrix, which uh, allow us to do some approximations. We talked a little bit about you know second the second order approximation of the quantum state. And then finally, we reached the linear response formalism by deriving the cubo formula. So then all of this is already uploaded in some video, but now we're going to just quickly go over this for you to have a video in which all the concepts that we have been uh, brain up so are condensing just one single uh, lecture so then um, this is how we started so we consider a quantum system described by a Schrodinger equation in which we have Hamiltonian H0 for which we know its ground state and we have a perturbation and what we want to do is to calculate a given response in a system that has an associated operator with it that in this um, lecture we will label as A of T and um, so we want to calculate um, the response of a system and the response of the quantum system due to the application of this perturbation okay so that perturbation this perturbation Hamiltonian W of T contains the disturbance that we uh, that we want to apply to then calculate the the response associated with this operator A of T, okay? So the disturbances can be magnetic field, electric fields, densities, and many type of things. Now, um, to start, what we did in the video in the interaction picture is that we considered the following ansatz for the quantum state, and uh, we defined a um, we defined this quantum state in terms of an auxiliary quantum state phi of t and uh, its time evolution will then depend on phi of t and of this propagator that depends on the free Hamiltonian or the Hamiltonian for which we know the ground state. When we replace this ansatz in the derivative of the state psi uh, then we can do some calculations that are uh, detailed here. You can just go through them as we did in the video in the, in the video about the interaction picture. And then we replace the same ansatz um, in the right hand side of this expression here. And then after just some manipulation here, we arrive at this Schrodinger equation. And if you recall from the interaction picture or from the interaction picture lecture, uh, these, all of this term here that's um, been applied on the state phi of t, is nothing but W defining the interaction picture and the interaction representation as we see here where this is the definition of W in the interaction representation okay now um, to just proceed what we want to know is what what is the what is the structural form of W of T how does our perturbation look like so we know that our perturbation is associated with some uh, quantum mechanical operator that represents the disturbance in the quantum system. Okay, so then and uh, that uh, structure will be encoded in this H of t. Now this factor here, I erased it a little bit, is an adiabatic factor. So this guarantees that the disturbance is applied slowly into the quantum system. Okay. We don't want sudden perturbations because the treatment of sudden perturbations is a bit harder and it's beyond linear response. So the form for H of T is given here. So H of T is nothing but uh, just some sensitivity function and B of R, which is the associated quantum mechanical operator with the disturbance. Now, if we want to express H of T in the interaction picture, so we perform uh, this calculation as we have been seeing since f of r comma t is a scalar then you can just move uh, this e to the i over h bar h0 t over 
And then here, what we have is nothing but B, the operator B, quantum mechanical operator B, defined in the interaction picture. Okay, I think we have um, more or less uh, the, you know, the tools to continue. So then this is the Hamiltonian, the time dependent Hamiltonian in the interaction picture. And what's left, as we have seen in, in the previous videos, is just to, to uh, construct an approximation for state phi of t, a linear approximation for state phi of t. And when I mean linear, I mean linear in the perturbation. That means that whatever approximation you want to come with, it has to depend only linearly with w sub i of t. You cannot, you cannot have products of w sub i times w sub i, nothing like that, just w sub i of t. That's how we're going to build up the approximation. I will just um, just step ahead a little bit and tell you how this is going to go. So then, uh, since I don't know the exact evolution of phi of tau in time, so I will then start with an estimate for, for phi of tau in terms of the knowledge of the state at t equal to minus infinity. Because this is the time at which there are no interactions, the state is nice and shiny, only h0 determines the dynamics of our system, so is only H0 is the generator of time translations for our system. So then uh, we just will replace, um, instead of phi of tau, we will replace phi of minus infinity here, and we will start constructing approximations using, um, using this approach or this philosophy. Okay, so now um, if we define then that the approximation to order zero is uh, phi of minus infinity, that means that um, to order zero, that means that when this t tends to minus infinity, so this integral is zero, and then we're left with this approximation that we have here, and then to first order, what we're going to do is that instead of having phi of tau here, we'll just have phi of t to zeroth order, which is what we have here, we replace that, and then we, we end up with this identity, which is the linear approximation to the quantum state phi of t, okay? This is the only thing we need to develop linear response. Um, nonetheless, uh, I record a video where I show you how to uh, go through the steps to construct, uh, uh, to construct approximations to second order. This is, of course, useful. Uh, it, uh, it's very useful, but we just don't use it in linear response, okay? So then uh, I show you how to use the time ordering operator to arrive at a form of this sort um, after going through all of these steps, form that will allow us to define the scattering matrix as the time order exponential of the perturbation W sub i of t. And as mentioned in previous videos, then the exact the exact uh, approximation to the state phi of t is when the order n in this formula goes to infinity. That's exact, okay? So uh, this is called the scattering matrix, what we have here. That means that we have infinite many multiplications of the perturbation w sub i of t here evaluated at these different times. Then what we will have is that we can completely know the knowledge of the quantum state phi of t from the knowledge of the state at t equal to minus infinity just by applying uh, to that state the scattering matrix evaluated in t and in t and minus infinity okay but we will not need that here i'm just trying to refresh refresh some concepts and just to give you some ideas um, what we're going to do is that we're going to use the linear representation for the quantum state that uh, we just um, derive here. So this representation, so this is the linear approximation of psi of t, and then we will use it here. Then we start by evaluating the expectation value of some arbitrary operator which is associated with the response we want to calculate to the disturbance 
that has an operator B of R associated with it. This is the philosophy linear response. Now, um, I start that with, um, in principle, I have to do it with the state for the complete quantum system. So I have to use psi of t here and psi of t here. Look, to first order. And then I replace the psi of t for the ansatz that we know, which is e to the minus i over h bar h zero t times phi of t to first order and here as well so from the left and to the right of a of r and then now this a of r as you can see here becomes uh, becomes represented in the interaction picture okay and then this is what we have to calculate now since um, as you can see here, this is the auxiliary state to first order and the auxiliary state to first order. So we just replace what we found for the auxiliary state to first order, which is this, to the left and to the right of A. And then we just elaborate a little bit here. So after just some multiplications, you can just see that you'll have this term, which is the expectation value of operator A, which is associated with the response in complete absence of the perturbation. So this is in complete absence of perturbation. This is very important because I will explain what that means in just a minute. So this is one term that we pick up from this multiplication here. That means when they, when we multiply W times A times one, and then of course we have to multiply one times A times W. So we just invert the order between W and A. And that's what we pick up here. This is W times A, and this is uh, here A times W. And this is just second order terms that we will ignore. So this is, um, which is for us, they will be negligible. And so we end up with the following expression. So um, corrections to second order, the difference between uh, the uh, product of A, W and W, A, expectation value in the absence of perturbation and then what we want to calculate rather than the response associated with a quantum mechanical operator A, we want to calculate what are the disturbances around this expectation value uh, due to the application of the perturbation W. That's why what we want to calculate is the, is the difference between the expectation value and uh, the, the total expectation value in the presence of the perturbation minus the expectation value in the absence of perturbation. This will give us the idea of what the perturbation does to the system, what sort of fluctuation induces, how the, how the behavior of the system uh, is modified or how the behavior of the system, let's say, fluctuates around an average, which is um, pretty much the expectation value in the absence of the perturbation, okay? So this is what we have to calculate. Um, so we just um, take this to the left or subtract this quantity from both sides. And then we arrive at this expression, which just putting it together, reads like this. Uh, now, when we specify what the perturbation in the interaction picture is, that we already developed this uh, earlier in the video, then we end up um, uh, we end up um, arriving at the following expression for the um, imbalance between the expectations value in the presence and in the absence of the perturbation, which is what delta a of r comma t is. And um, so then we replace the perturbation here, and uh, we just take into account that uh, e to the delta tau is an adiabatic factor f of r prime comma tau which is the sensitivity so we take everything outside the expectation value and then we end up um, um, we end up with something like this this will be more or less some final expression for uh, a for delta a of r comma t now um, this notation here where we have suppressed the minus infinity from the quantum state is just that we have adopted a formalism to evaluate the expectation value. And what we have adopted here is the thermal expectation value. That's the formalism we're going to use, which is equal to one over the partition function 
times uh, this um, this uh, this micro canonical factor times uh, this expectation value of the uh, commutator between an operator A and B and the expectation value um, is calculated on state phi n which is just a set of states uh, um, many body states uh, that um, contains all possible modes present in the quantum mechanical system okay so now this integral from uh, t 2 minus infinity to t to plus infinity so the integral in d tau is written from minus infinity to t what we want is to uh, write this up to plus infinity the what we have to do if we do this we have to introduce a restriction uh, theta of t minus tau in such a way that for all times tau larger than t all of this expression will vanish okay that's uh, what we have to do and that's what this restriction theta of t minus tau does this now starts looking a little bit like the retarded Green's function, doesn't it? We have minus i over h bar here, and we have a theta of t minus tau here, okay? That's what it looks like. And then that's what we write here, um, where uh, the Green's function g sub a b of r is known as well as the cube of susceptibility, which is calculated in this way. So in a different video, I will show that actually these type of susceptibilities they coincide with retarded Green's functions in different domains, whether in the real time domain, in the imaginary time domain, so forth and so on. Okay, so then uh, we have reached the cube of susceptibility formula. This is the formula that we want to arrive at. So then, if you want, let's say, the complete picture with response and excitation, this is what what you got. And then, if you just want to know what is the susceptibility of uh, of operator A to operator B, uh, this is exactly what we have, so chi A B, and then um, this delta A of RT is written in terms of cubic susceptibility in the same way that is written when you have the Green's function. Then this is the cubo formula, um, mm, cubo formula, this is pretty much what we have done in this video, is just summarizing what we have done in the previous four videos uh, that you have been uh, watching. Hopefully, so we're talking about interaction picture scattering matrix, second order approximation to quantum state and the uh, cube formalism. Okay, so then in future videos, what we'll discuss is some applications or the applicability of the cube formula. So we will derive cube for conductivity. We will talk about polarization, and this one is especially one that I really like, that I really enjoy because this has to do a lot with my own research which is the spin-spin susceptibility from the cubo formula, okay? So then this is all, uh, I hope that this is uh, condensed enough for you just to go through every time you need to refresh some concepts and uh, just see you in the next video. Thanks.